So Roman law, how is that connected to today's civil law or and common law that you speak about and that, that people within the, this in power movement mm -hmm. are talking about? Mm -hmm. And natural law, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the difference here? And what can we use if, well, if people want to be sovereign being, beings, not being part of the state mm -hmm. under this so-called contract that you talk about? So the one thing is that there is a movement going on where people are trying to free them up, themselves up from these contracts. And then there is another thing called the in-power movement. So these aren't one and the same thing. But the in-power movement uses the knowledge and has created a document within this knowledge base which will work within the system we have now because it understands the system. Um, it's not based on common law in that way. It's based on a multi-jurisdictional um, status. So it creates a status which I believe is true that you can do. You create a jurisdictional status within the document and then operates on multi-levels. So it can operate on the spiritual jurisdiction. Natural law is in the, in the word book, like in the Danish dictionary, it says natural law is something that refers to higher spiritual jurisdictions and, not, and laws that are not man-made. It goes back to Aristoteles and it goes back to Thomas from Aquino. This idea of natural law, that the, law, the laws which exist have to reflect a higher status. So this is something that natural law takes reference to. Um, civil law, something coming from the Romans, coming from the Roman time, which we have in Europe. We have our law is based on civil law. Common law is based on precedence law. So it's not just laws that's codified in the books, but in common law the system was more, what did the judge decide last month? What did the judge decide 100 years ago? So this is how the common law system was built up. So it's a little bit different. Roman law was based on a lot of codes and paragraphs, and the other was based on precedence. This is just a generalization. So the notice of liability is not based on common law. It's not, not really based on civil law, although it does operate within the civil as well. Um, it's based on higher jurisdictions. And what is the highest jurisdiction? It is our connection to the spiritual world. So it has references to the Bible as being a book which they all swore on up until a few years ago in Europe. But they still swear on the Bible if you're in a coronational oath or you were as Mary uh, Elizabeth, the Queen of England. She swore on the Bible. They all swear on the book because their power comes from somewhere else, or at least they want to show us this. So it operates within the jurisdictions and it is using the knowledge of contracts. That's the main thing about the notice of liability, that the understanding of what a contract is and how a contract works makes the document so powerful. So the problem which we are all facing today is that we are in commerce all the time and we do not know that they are functioning in commercial law. So the commercial law is based on contract. That means I make the first thing that you do if you want to create a contract is to make an offer. So Cal discovered, Cal Washington, that actually it's just an offer to get a smart meter. It's an offer that you could have 5G. And they told us about it. They told us because they put it in the newspaper. They sent you a little notice. They were coming on Thursday to change out your analog to a digital meter. They told us that they're going to vaccinate us soon. We're all going to have to have it. Now they're really telling us. But this is a commercial offer. Once you know it's a commercial offer, you have to say, OK, we can deal with it in commercial. So we are corporations through our birth certificates. They created us to corporations. So this is all about the trust account. People who are interested can go and research the CES2P trust account or the straw man account. So they create, they trade in the birth certificate for another certificate of being a person. So a person is not a live man and woman in their language. A person is something else. So you are a corporation. Well, a sales object. Of course, also, yes. <laughs> so through that nice little trade of the 
of the documents, you, we have all become a corporation. So now we can say, okay, thank you very much, we know what to do. We're in corporate law, or we're in commerce, we know it's an offer, and this is Cal's work and research, which I'm just parroting, but he's, I believe it's probably true, that if you have gotten an offer in commerce, you can't say no, but you can say a conditional yes, because it's dishonorable to say no, I don't want, and let's fight against, and let's go on the, on the, on the street and protest and do all that. That's actually not honorable in commerce. You have to always say yes, but. You can say yes, but. Or you can say whereas, it seems like. You can make conditions, so you can take a conditional acceptance. And then the contract is valid and it's running. So we say yes, this contract, which Cal is finishing. So Cal has finished this contract and we in the different countries around the world, now 16 countries are ready to get it out, have adjusted it to our own countries. So one says, yes, thank you very much for your offer. We will, of course, accept this interesting thing you're installing in my house. But first you have to prove to me, whereas it seems as if it is dangerous for our health, whereas it seems as if it is collecting data. This is against the law. Whereas it seems as if it is part of a worldwide agenda. And there's a long list, so it goes on for 20 pages. So this the notice of liability has already, they've already started sending it out over the years to many officials, so-called corporate officials, government officials, people who are pushing these various agendas. And then when they get the document, they cannot say no anymore because it was them who started the contract. So once you've started a contract and made an offer, you cannot step down. Everybody knows this. It's against the law to put in the papers that we're going to sell all the cars in our place for two crowns or two dollars, right? We can't write that because everyone will come. We have to do it. So people could say no to smart meters or what? That's the thing. You can say no. So that did happen. It has happened in USA. Using no, the, the notice of liability. Mm -hmm. That then they were given options to opt out or some, some communities actually stopped the whole thing. But it hasn't been used widely. So when they started it, giving out the notice of liability, there was a lot of, then they realized what a huge thing this was and how difficult it was going to be. So then they have been working very hard for several years now to get a whole platform finished so that people can become members of In Power Movement. You pay your $10 a month. And then as soon as this platform is open, and it is very, very close now, then we can get access to documents which we can send in the correct manner to the people we choose, but they will help us. That means we will help everybody to make sure we have the right addresses. People who are really in the agenda or have the, the duty of responsibility. Because so it's still in the works. It's not functioning at the moment. No, there have been many, many stones and hurdles. It has not been easy because of course you need a huge server. So then you're in the IT world they're not so happy because they find out, oh, there's something against vaccines. So many, they had huge amount of works that were almost finished and then they were, were told uh, that the companies uh, actually did not complete the contracts with them. But now it seems like it's really going to get opened quite soon. Mm -hmm. And people probably need this more than ever if they want to look into this and actually, well, be serious about this. Mm. Although it's very, very difficult for a lot of people to just renounce their citizenship or, or the state and actually understand that whole entangled web there that, that well, you're the, talking about. huh? Well, this is why also one of the reasons in power movement has been taking so long because you do not have to do that. First of all, the document is crafted in such a way you do not have to do that. That's something separate. You, you declare yourself a living man a living woman, and that's enough. I am a living woman. I'm writing this, so you're a living woman. So it's declared because it's a document. And the other thing is, is once it's sent to somebody, in order to answer it, you have to rebut every point on it. And if they do not rebut, they do what they expect us to do all the time, and they go into tacit consent. So everything that the state or organizations or companies they want you to do and say this is the rules and the, uh, and the law mm -hmm. it's actually an offer it's a contract it's an offer. and then you 
can make a counter offer. You have your own contract and you can say, I'm not having that or if I'm if I should have this, then at least th there should be no side effects to the vaccines or problems, side effects coming from radiation. rigging up radiation right. from smart meters or 5G uh, or whatever they're whatever, doing, yeah. which can be very difficult because they're rigging that up all over. All over, yeah. So it's finishing the contract, actually, because they make a contract with us, but they don't finish it. And because they say it is a maxim of law that tacit consent is a maxim. If you do not say no, you have said yes. So they start the contract, and once they start it, they cannot re go out of it. And if they do not follow their rules within the merchant law, then they let the system fall too. So they, they're in, a, in America, what do we say, between a, a stove and a hot spot. <laughs> because that's the system they created. So the system is on trial, the system of commerce, which has, in the Bible, it's called Babylon. So it's actually on trial. And as soon as this really goes and people start to understand it, it's going to be falling because they have to follow their own rules. And if they do not follow their own rules, then they let their system fall. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So it is a contract. It's a completion of a contract which was started by the industry, the corporate industry, because that's how they are functioning. So that is why we could never really understand before, why does Monsanto able to rule the government? You know, they make all the laws about agriculture. Why do these companies always allowed to pollute our water and our lives? Why are they allowed? Because it's just business. And they function within a law system, which we have not been aware of. But in what way have we agreed to become a, like, have this contract with the state? Because they changed out our live birth certificate for, uh, here in Denmark, it's for the Baptist, uh, the baptism, sh uh, what do you call it? Protestant? Or, no, or, in Denmark, they take oh, the yeah, live birth yeah. Certificate and then they give you a uh, uh No, what's it called? The Tauschein. You you get your your certificate of baptism. Birth certificate. But it's a birth certificate. So the it's not the live birth certificate that gets changed in for another certificate, which has put you in into the trust account and created you as a number. A number in a corporation. And what Bibi Bakus has been speaking about and many other people is that there's huge amounts of money being put on these accounts. But should we try to dissolve or uh, annul this contract? And in what way can that be done? Well, that's where you were speaking about declaring yourself to be living and so on. I think this is a very difficult thing. And in power movement is not at, at recommending this or doing anything about that. They're doing it in a different way. If you go direct and try to get your account dissolved or try to get your money, I haven't dived into this, but I know it's not for everybody. It's very complicated. Your life changes. You have to accept a lot of, you, you had Ingun here and you know how difficult her life became. Yeah. So it's not what in power is about. In power is for everybody who wants to try and do a few steps with a document. You also become quite empowered because when you understand that everything is an offer and everything is a contract, your life changes suddenly. Mm. You don't, you're not, you are a different person. And when you have conflicts with authorities or shops or this and that, you know how to speak within their own language. So it's actually, it's not an aggressive movement. It's in a movement of complete truthfulness and love and grace. And one addresses the people who are initiating this because it's always in the end people that have to do it. They've said yes to be the front man. And these front men are being going to be addressed more and more around the world with their responsibility. They have responsibility of care. And this is if we say natural, this is the high, a high level. You have a res we have responsibility for each other. We cannot unleash 
horrible technologies into the world. They're going well, to they're destroy. doing all of that at the moment because of this COVID-19 pandemic and the global lockdown and all of this. And now they're and the face masks and restrictions, freedom of speech, enormously challenged and censorship and shadow banning on the internet, speaking about alternative things. Uh, and now, of course, what they talk about mandatory vaccinations. Bill Gates has been in the You're mainstream talking news about, yeah. talking about that nothing will get back to normal until we get these mm -hmm. mandatory forced vaccinations. Mm -hmm. So how can we apply this notice of liability and the, what the in power movement is doing in terms of what's actually going on if this is a new world order takeover that they've been talking about for so many years? Well, in order to do the things they want to do, they are going to need a lot of people to Im implement it. And up until now, it's been easier and easier to get the government officials to implement things that are nefarious and dangerous and actually completely against the constitutions, the rules, the everything. They even change the constitutions overnight Why not? in different countries. Why huh? not? Yeah. And people comply to this. They believe it. They are full of fear. They're captured by fear mm -hmm. because the mainstream media is telling them and the health officials and all of this. And of course, the politicians. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a lot of things going on, but it's not covered in the media or you're, it's covered by the alternative medias. And so do you think that this whole um, coronavirus pandemic is part of this, of course, the New World Order, UN Agenda 21, climate change, depopulation plan, ultimately linked to an AI artificial intelligence agenda with this 5G network and Wi-Fi, smart meters, smart cities, Internet of Things, all of this connecting us through this electromagnetic grid even around the world, and the satellites, the, the, the Elon Musk satellites around the globe. What do you think? Is this part of wanting to connect the human mind with AI eventually? Or maybe already has been done. <laughs> I mean, you had the interviews with Cyrus Parsos, is that his name? Yes. Cyrus A. Parsa? Yes, yeah, Parsa, yeah. yes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, his, what he's saying is that this is very, very advanced and it could really be that they, I'm sure this is what is being attempted um, to create a kind of a race of automatic people that um, do not think on their own, do not act on their own and taking away this chance from us. So we have to see it's a, it's a chance we have and it's going to win, you know. But how much destruction can they do before they finally come to the end? But what can we do right now, hands on? Mm. Well, my opinion about that is really think it through. So anything that they are doing, they've planned it a long time. We know that. So it's, it's 100, 200, or many hundreds of year plans. So there's a plan been going on, and each round, each generation, one can generate the next level of these, this agenda, if we call it that. So there's this uh, Danish philosopher, sociologist, his name was Hollenberg, Johannes Hollenberg. He said, even back then, he died in the 60s, so maybe he said it in the 30s, 40s, that you know, the kind of control that the government now has on our lives, nobody could have envisioned 100 or 200 years ago. They really control your whole life. And now in the Western world, we know that our life is controlled. They control the conception. They control the preconception. They control the birth. They control, the, you know, the vaccines. They control your health. They, there's no sphere of life that is not under control. By thinking that you have your own individual rights because you're not under so-called direct slavery, huh? Yeah, by or, or a direct, exactly. well, dictatorship. And that's the nice trick of it, that you do it in a way that people want it. So this is war on consciousness. This is mind control techniques, basically controlling human perception. Mm -hmm. And people are under this magic spell and they need to 
break that to wake up. We always talk about, say, wake up, wake up. Mm -hmm. That really is what it is in a way, isn't it? To try and, and decalcify that pineal gland and to... Yeah, well, everything's been done that they could chemically through the schools, through the materialism, and through the thoughts, you, you calcify this thing. If you have thoughts that aren't connected to, to other thoughts in such a way that it, it is a spiritual re the reality that you're getting to with your thoughts, then you're, you will have calcification of your own organs. So decalcification is all just thinking things. So in being able to think how the society could look in a different way is already a big step being able to look through it and also realize that at the minute not only did they fuse you know commercial law and the law of the ju the judicial law of how the people should be behaving with each other or how you know can you kill somebody can you steal all this kind of common law civil law but merging that together it made it very confused yeah so this was this idea which Rudersteiner presented that Actually, these three there are three spheres, main spheres within the social life, and we don't know about it, but they're there, and they have all their separate jurisdictions and ways of, of working. They should be separate from each other, and that is the cultural sphere, that is the economic sphere, and that is the sphere of the judicial. And that if you mix them all together, which traditionally has been done because one wants this mega state, conglomerate state, the Romans did as well, and it's just continued, then people do not know where they are. Are we in the cultural life? So he made people aware of the fact, actually, the French Revolution had those three words, you know, freedom, equality, and brotherhood. And we all learned this in school, and already in school when I was in the seventh grade, freedom, how does it work with equality? It's two different things, you know. You realize it right away. It doesn't fit in your brain somehow. Brotherhood and freedom, are those, those are sort of wildly different, you know. But that was their, their words that they used to promote this revolution. He says, actually, these are spiritual realities. They got it as a spiritual inspiration, but they didn't know what to do with it. So in the end, they were just cutting off heads on the street. You know, this isn't where it needs to go, but to understand that these, these are three words that belong to three different spheres. So if we're talking about cultural life, what is the main word that we have to promote? That is the freedom of the individual in his cultural development. How does he develop in, in respect to what's calling me inside? Am I an artist? Am I a doctor? Am I this? Am I that? And do I have these branches I need to study to, to fill up this individual? The person needs the freedom. If we do not give this freedom as much as we can to every individual in this world, we don't know what we're missing. We don't know what we're missing because we let children die of hunger somewhere. It's not just the horrible fact that they die of hunger or that they're being misused with pedophiles and all this. It's what are we missing in the world? What could we be getting if everybody was really freed up within the cultural sphere? But then as soon as you go into this other sphere, and we have to realize it's like putting on another costume or hat of the economy, if we just let freedom there, we have what we have today. You know, they always told us the best thing is the free market. You know, this is, this is this interesting for them who have a lot of money. But that the economic sphere is a different sphere. It's we're there to take care of each other. And that's why we, dis, that's why we agreed to specialize. So in the old days when we were self-sufficient, almost everybody was some kind of self-sufficient person and only the kings and, you know, the higher up um, levels, they were not self-sufficient, but everyone was sort of self-sufficient. They did everything. We were happy doing everything. Um, and we were also a diversified person. And now you can't even buy your own piece of land no, and you grow can't. your own food and vegetables. So, huh? Right. They're taking that aspect from us. But the fact that we did specialize means we do things for each other. So look around here, this nice place. Is there anything you made? Or in your closet, is there anything I made? Or in my apartment, is my house, is there anything I did? Nothing. My goodness, how many thousands of people are helping me in my life every day, you know? We offer ourselves, we sacrifice for each other. And then we gain a possibility of a new cultural life because we're not so busy making shoes and candles in the night and soap because my soap ran out. Imagine we were doing these things. 
we free ourselves up, we free each other up. But therefore, we have to take care of each other because we've all sacrificed our universal person for something very specialized. And some people work like robots in the factories. And, you know, so we've sacrificed. People our, work very, very hard for small money. For you know. small money. And why should they do that? Because they've sacrificed themselves entirely for an industrial process. Why shouldn't they have as much of this pie, which is called the gross national product, as somebody else? We have to divide it. We have to take care of each other. Therefore, this word brotherhood is in the economic sphere. That is the word, not free market, not trickle down economics, not anything else. It is brotherhood. So when we walk into this economic sphere, we put on this, these glasses and we see everything from this way. We go into the judicial. I don't want any laws made that are only for me or only for the ruling classes. We want laws that are helping everybody because we know where it's going that we need to help the individual to their own th thriving, to their own flourishing, to their own opening of their new qualities. So we know everything has to feed in the end the cultural life, but also the laws have to be made so that the individual can flourish, but also that the economy doesn't kill the world because it has all the tools of destruction in its hands. So what would you suggest that people should do? How should, it, how should we reform things or what would be the best solution right now? This is a difficult moment in time. I think the main thing is to really start to understand it and think it through. Because one, as long as it's in this unified state, unified government, where all these different spheres are in one, and they can decide over what medicine you get, they can decide over this, one cannot see what's going on. Can you say no to these things well, when you are under this so-called uh, contract with, uh, under the state, huh? Well, this is the thing England was speaking to you about, that one feels always from the beginning, well, we are actually paying for the wars, we're doing this, we're part of it. And that is what they want. They, want, they create this matrix and we're all part of it. But in the end, the individual has the individual power. And this is what InPower pe is showing people, that in you is the power. It's not there. They're creating this, this smoke and gun, smoke and mirrors aspect as well, so that we are frightened, that we are paralyzed, that we are... But they even say that if you don't get this, they even suggest that perhaps it will be this way, that if you don't take or get the, vac the, the vaccination and the vaccine, mm -hmm. then you can't travel, mm -hmm. then you can't even go to work or certain jobs will not have you there any longer, and there are places you can't go. Mm -hmm or be part of. Okay, well, one thing one can do right now is really work with this in power movement because it's going to stop it. You know, once it rolls out, imagine that here in Denmark, I don't want to name names, but somebody who is in the, uh, the Ministry of Health is getting 500 letters on his desk saying that he is responsible. And these letters aren't just nice letters. They are nice, they're very kind, but they are in commerce. So in commerce, you charge people. Commerce is all about money. So you, cre you cre create the case, not in court. So how much w would you charge that health minister here? Per day for not stopping 5G. So you have seven days to start taking it down. You have seven days to come and take out my smart meter. And if you haven't done it, then we will start charging you. How much? Well, they're recommending $10,000 a day. It's a very nice sum. But it, it will accumulate quickly unless they take it down. Once they take it down, then we're fine with it. But so, then so they will be create, we are creating, we will be creating letters of debt. So they will be owing huge amounts of money. And this will be part of the public record because it will all be online. So the notice of letters. liability can really be implemented, uh, applied and used by people. It can be and you will, and you are structuring this with all of the people that you work with in the in power movement and this is all over the world basically of course we go to many different countries mm -hmm. here so this so so people can find their own division of the in power movement yes. in several countries at least yes 16 countries 
so there 16, are 16 countries, countries around the world for now right so and, and then we're still i mean some countries haven't started or switzerland has maybe started germany hasn't got there it's going so but sweden norway and denmark already have got got the work going denmark is finished with our nol it's ready to be released soon and then people can start using the documents and i think it will be extremely powerful you know if if so so I this is the importance of working together huh exactly and really working on one project that's knowing i know it's going to work you know imagine you are minister of health you get these letters it's there on internet wow he got 20 letters today wow he got 30 letters tomorrow he's getting all these letters and then the ledger is going to be there he owes so much money to this person he's now owing this to them he's going to have a nice amount of pressure on his poor shoulders poor man but he is responsible he has a duty of care to us he has a duty of care yeah, but can he be forced to pay all of this money to people we'll see how it's going to go but for his life it's not very comfortable right so you have to think of the whole connections like with the glass well what would happen to you oh i would want to quit my job right try to get away thank you very much okay i go to another company some of them are already moving we've seen them move rossman's already gone so some of these people are, are all around the world they're moving so they move to another place but thank you very much we're good researchers we're going to send it to your new workplace and we're going to send the next person who comes and sits in your workplace also a document and remind him that this document belongs in your workplace so he will also get one so if he moves to another place the document becomes two and the the debt is growing so there's many things that we know about debt what is a bank it's all debt so a paper saying that he owes me after so many weeks and months maybe so many hundreds of thousands is already money in our today's system which they created so is there actually a website where people can read more about this and really go in depth and understand the whole thing it's and, called and empowermovement.com and you can become a member and have access to the so-called interim site which is the transitional site until the final one is open and on that site there are re re literally hundreds of hours of reading and and documents and not the doc, not the NOL it's not available at the moment but there's the understanding as well as videos and webinars there's regular webinars going on i think we had what was it last night or two nights ago there was a webinar for all the members and these regular webinars are going on where people can talk together understand the system and be of the of the NOL and be ready to start to send it and get involved and get involved. So it's in we need power movement. So it's in power movement .com. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just briefly in our remaining moment here, your final most positive thoughts <laughs> for people listening to this. I have tons of positive thoughts. I just think it's an amazing time to be alive. We are all asked to do that work to go inside and you see i i'm amazed at how many people i see talking who are always saying I, I, it's in here you know people are feeling this being in me which they've been trying to tell me is some arbitrary thing which happened in some way or i took botany 101 and what did we learn after three weeks of interesting plant life and plant development we had to learn that there was some mud and then the lightning came there, and then a cell came about. Scratch your head again. A cell came out of lightning and mud? It doesn't make sense. So everything is arbitrary. So this cell was born with organs, it had a membrane, it had DNA, it had this, and just lightning came and there it was. Can you repeat this experiment? Well, no, but this is what we base our science on. So there we have this science of the abstract hypothesis. So today, and that goes over to you too, you are just an arbitrary thing that came about through chance, through mutation. Then we had to learn all the mutation steps. So it was a one cell organism, then there was a mutation, became a two cell organism. And then all these mutations happened. And then one day there you were, Lucas Alexander, <laughs> through mutation and chance. And you know, it sounds very ridiculous, doesn't it? But today people are noticing it is a myth. It's worse than the myths that they told us were myths. It's actually a lie. We are something completely different. 
an individual on this world in this world right now and is so important every one of us is so important and we are really able to show to get the glasses on that show through the smoke and mirrors and see begin to see the reality and then we will know what to do my words for everyone are start to think about it start to know how things should look like in the economy in the social life start to make the plan write a new constitution just wake up tomorrow and say what should i write and you'll start to have ideas the ideas are there they're just streaming at us all the time we have to grab them develop them implement and bring it to manifestation that's my last word <laughs> wow wow it's been really fascinating really interesting and wonderful to have this in-depth conversation with you and i want thank to thank you, you so much trust. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Diane Vincent, for doing this interview with Age of Truth TV. And thank you, Lucas. It was very nice. <laughs>